Hello, welcome back students. My name is Dolan Manerji and we are continuing with the geotechnical engineering video lectures. So now we will be talking about some important concepts and terminologies. Okay. So this will you will be using at a number of times during the whole uh, lectures. So let us let us first of all go through this. So basic terms just we will be describing some basic terms and their concepts and physical meanings. Okay. So let us move one by one. First of all, see into this graph. If you remember, we were, I have already <coughs> talked about this sieve analysis. Okay. Or particle particle distribution curve. We have already seen them in details. Okay. We also know how these curves are formed and what uh, how the cumulative uh, are found out okay cumulative percentages are found out then how the curve is made okay you know already that particle size distribution curve okay so but you have to see that always we don't get a smooth curve okay in field the soil may be gap graded or well graded or anything like that now what are this gap graded well graded we will look into this diagram so that you can have a picture of this. First of all, see this. This is a coarse grain soil. You can see it's written here, coarse grained. Okay, it's a coarse grain soil. Like this, it is moving. This is coarse grain. This is a fine grain soil. Okay, we just these are find found out how these are uh, differentiated just by the particle size. Okay, by the particle size. From here to here, it is made as fine grain why it is told as fine grain because you can see the maximum part is going inside this part so this is called fine grain and here why it is coarse grain because it's maximum part you can see this whole part is in coarser part or coarser region so this is the coarse grain and this is the fine grain okay first thing is this then now once you have seen these two now you can see there are a number of diagrams in or lines made here this is written as gap grade this is well grade now what are these this is uniform actually what happens if you have a soil which has uh, nearly every kind of particle okay if uh, you have a soil whose uh, you can say gradation or whose uh, composition is in such a way that it is containing different types of particle from uh, you can say fine grains to coarse grains a number of types different types of uh, grains are mixed in that soil so in that case what will happen you will get a smooth curve and it will prolong from here to there why because it has fine grains also it has coarse grain also okay due to this it will be having a long curve here you can see this curve this one this curve here this this curve here you can see you can see where has it started and where it is has ended so it has carried within it a lot of different types of a lot of different types of grains in it of different sizes okay so you can see its d10 is something like this d30 is something like this okay d60 is something like this variety you can see this is 0 0.004 and this is 0 0.08 so you can see the variety of the particles in this soil so this is called well graded why well graded because well graded why well graded because it contains contains a very wide variety of different size particles okay so this is your well graded okay this is easier well graded now let us talk about gap graded what is gap graded this one this curve here is called gap graded 
you can see it is also a very long curve it is starting from here and leave going up to here but why it is not called as well graded because you can see this part this part here it is flat okay it is flat it is flat what does this mean that here in this region it does not have any soil particles of this size this size from here to here which means what it has a particles here it has particles here but it has no particles here means there is a gap in particle size in this region so it is called as gap graded okay do you understand this the gap graded just you can see that gap graded a region of size for particles is missing okay so this is the gap graded now i think you understood this is the gapping then let's move to the final one which is your uniform soil this is your uniform soil one second this is your uniform soil okay this is your uniform soil now why is it called as uniform because you can see the range is very low most of the particles you can see in this region in this part you can see that most of the particles lie here only means the, most of the particles are near about this of same size near about of same size means that it is uniform means most of the size of the particles in that soil which constitutes that soil is actually of same size or nearly of same size so this part here you can see how steep the curve is so due to this only it is called uniform because same size particles are dominant in this soil okay so uniform same sized particle is dominant or a range of particle is highest constituent to end of these soils okay sorry so this is it you can see you can note it down okay so now you are clear with what is fine grain what is gap graded what is uniform what is well graded and coarse grain okay okay you can also draw this diagram in rough so that you can understand what are these okay so now let's move forward corrections to hydrometer analysis if you remember what was hydrometer analysis we actually carried out the hydrometer analysis in order to hydrometer analysis why was this carried out if you remember this was carried out to grade or classify fine grain soil fine grained soil okay so there you i also had told you about the meniscus correction okay if you can recollect that beside that actually in this analysis we have three main corrections one is the meniscus correction one is temperature correction and dispersing agent correction okay cm ct cd now what are these actually meniscus correction if you remember i have told you suppose this is the 
cylinder ok measuring cylinder something like this. Now, you are have filled the water in the water will have a surface like this ok due to its cohesive property you know. So, once you have filled it and the soil is put into it and mixed thoroughly what will happen? The water will get turbid ok this water will get turbid I am sorry. this will get turbid ok, turbid means low visibility. So, what will happen? When you see the reading, try to see the reading this is your eye suppose, when you see the reading you have to see actually this one, but you due to turbidity you see this one, you see this one instead of this one you see this one ok. So, what will happen due to this? The you have a erroneous reading ok, this much error you get constitute in your reading ok. So, what do you have to do? You actually have to take this reading, you have taken this reading. So, a positive correction is to be applied in order to get to this part ok, on this is the meniscus reading. Since the suspension is opaque, the reading will be taken at the top of the meniscus while the actual reading should be taken at the bottom of the meniscus as I told you, it is constant for hydrometer and always positive ok. Now, temperature correction, what is temperature correction? Actually these tem analysis is or these experiments are carried out at 27 degree centigrade, this is the standard condition for temperature, but there can be different condition and it may not be that you are always constitu constituting your experiment at 27 degree exactly. So, it may be higher than that or lower than that. So, in that case we have to provide the temperature correction. So, you can see if the temperature is temperature T is less than 27 degree centigrade then it will have a negative correction and if the temperature is greater than 27 degree centigrade then you have to apply the positive correction ok. You can see here also that is temperature less than then the correction will be negative and vice versa ok. Temperature should be measured from starting till end of the test at regular intervals and are averaged then it is compared with the standard temperature that is 27 degree centigrade. So, this was another concept and what is dispersing agent correction? Dispersing agent correction you know that yesterday I told you about flocculation. Flocculation, what happens? This flocculation in order to remove this flocculation because once flocculation is caused the hydrometer analysis will be not properly carried out or why? Because once they have made the flocks in the water, their descending time will alter, their properties will alter. So, your test or your analysis will be not valid, it will not remain valid at all from that point of time. So, what we have to ensure that the each of the particle is discrete, ok, their settlement is discrete, so that they can follow the Stokes law, ok. So, once we have to remove this flocculation what we did yesterday if you remember we added a calgon solution calgon solution calgon solution or what is this what is calgon solution this was a deflocculator okay deflocculator also named as sodium hexametaphosphate hexametaphosphate ok, this is sodium hexametaphosphate. So, obviously, when we will add some chemical into the water even though its region may be the reflocculation, but what will happen? It will increase the specific gravity and density of the water which was actually to be ok, it will be increased. So, due to this what will happen? The you can see the specific gravity gets increased ok, it will all increase. So, due to this the correction will be always negative because we have to reduce the specific gravity. So, the correction will be always negative in this case ok. So, these were the three corrections which we consider in the hydrometer analysis. Now, what is plasticity index? Let us see plasticity index represented by IP. 
range of consistency or water content within which the swell behaves as plastic material is called plasticity index. How is this range find out? Found out it is generally W L minus W P. This is plastic limit, this is liquid limit. This two, the difference of this two will give you the region in which the, the soil will remain plastic that is your plasticity index. Plasticity index is expressed in percentage of the dry weight of the soil. In general, plasticity index depends only on the amount of clay present. Okay. It indicates the fineness of the soil and capacity of the soil to change shape without altering the volume. High plasticity indicates that plasticity index indicates that excess of clay is there. Why? Because in the first, uh, in the previous class, if you remember, I told you that the plasticity and plastic properties are actually only talked about fine grain. Okay, and what is the fine grain? Fine grain is clay. So, if the soil is having a high plasticity or has a very high plasticity index, this means it has a very high range in which the soil will remain plastic. Okay, it will be a high range in which the soil will remain plastic. The soil will remain plastic. This means what? That there is a high content of clay because clay is the only one particle which causes the plasticity. So, if there is a high plasticity index, it means that the clay content of that soil is high. Okay. So, the same is written here. Now, there are some values you can see from this also you can understand see this is for sand and silt you can see plasticity index how less it is 0 to 1. So, it is called non plastic if it is higher than 1 point see there are if there are some traces of clay or little clay accordingly they are getting increased. So, it will be low, slight plastic or low plastic then clay loam means it is high because with loam it is clay also there. Okay. So, it is medium plastic then silty clay means now clay content is higher. So, again the plasticity it is high plasticity and if only clay we are talking then you can see it is greater than 35 very high plasticity. Okay. So, these are the different cases of plasticity index. So, this was one of the index. Now, let us go to the next index that is your consistency index. What is consistency index? Consistency you know already what is consistency according to that it will be the consistency index or the relative consistency is defined the ratio of liquid limit minus the natural water content to the plasticity index. Okay. This is L plasticity limit. Okay. C i you can write as W L minus W n upon this is n upon W L minus W p. What are these? This is liquid limit. Okay. These are liquid limit this is water content in natural condition. So, I have written it n. This is your water content at natural natural condition. What is this? This is plastic limit. So, the difference will give you the consistency index. Okay. The ratio of these will be giving you the consistency index. Now, this consistency index helps us to know in what condition the soil is. Okay. Either the soil is in a dry condition or wet condition or liquid condition that we will we can find out from this uh, <coughs> consistency index only. Okay. So, let us see how is it done. Consistency index is useful in the study of field behavior of saturated fine grain soil. If consistency index of a soil is equal to unity, if it is 1, what does that mean? This means that this is equal to W p only in that condition then they will cancel out giving you 1. What does that mean? That the soil in the natural state is at plastic limit. Okay the soil in the natural state or in the ground is at the plastic limit. Okay. This is at plastic limit. Then a soil with uh, equal to 0 is at liquid limit. Why at liquid limit? Because if one unit will be 0 W L minus W L upon I P. Okay. This is the formula. They get 0 when they are equal. They are equal means the soil at its natural condition is at liquid limit means it is a flowing like liquid or it is in liquid state. Okay. If it exceeds unity the soil is in a semi solid state and will be stiff. When will it ex exceed unity? When, when will its value be greater than unity? Only then only when the difference of this is less than the difference of this. Okay. What does this mean? Example you can say suppose uh, the difference of these two numerators comes out to be 6. 
and this comes out to be 4. So, 1 point something. Okay. So, you, this gives you what? This gives you that the, it is greater than 1. Okay. It is greater than 1, which means you are having a semi solid state of the soil. Negative consistency index indicates that the soil has a natural water content greater than the liquid limit and hence behaves just like a liquid. Okay. Means negative. What does this mean? Negative means means the C i will be water liquid limit minus something here which is W n. This is greater than W l. The only in that condition it can be negative. Okay. Only in that condition it can be negative because I p is a different parameter we are only uh, fluctuating or we can only vary this part. So, to make it negative this must be greater than W l which means again it, the soil is in the liquid condition. Okay, the soil is in liquid condition. I think you have understood this. Okay, so, this part helps us to identify in which condition or which state the soil is using the consistency index. Okay, so, let us move forward liquidity index. This is also nearly same to the consistency index, but we, you can see the formula is different. Okay. Now, in this case what will happen liquidity index W n minus W p upon W l minus W p. You can see the difference in the formula. This is liquid limit, this is plastic limit, this is plastic limit and now here it is the natural water content. Okay in this place. The liquid limit, liquidity index or pl water plasticity ratio is the ratio expressed as percentage of the natural water content of soil minus its plastic limit to its plasticity index. This is what I have written here. Okay. Again in this also we can find out the work state of the soil. How? If this is less than 0, if liquid liquidity index is less than 0, how can this be less than 0? means it is negative means this part is less than this okay or this is greater means the it will be in the dry or brittle state okay something if you remember the graph wl wp ws the the natural water content must be in this part only only then this will be bigger so it will be in dry and brittle condition if it is in between 0 to 1, then the soil is in the plastic state. 0 to 1 means if it is let us suppose half, what does that mean? If it is half, what does that mean? It is lying in this area. Okay. So, this is it is telling us. If greater than 1, then the liquid. Obviously, if it is greater than 1, because this is already the difference between them. Okay. If it is greater than 1, this means that this is greater than W L. So, it will be somewhere here. So, it will be liquid the soil will be behaving as a liquid. Okay. So, let us move forward. Toughness index. What is toughness index? The ratio of plasticity index and flow index of the soil. It is the toughness index. You can see this is the formula. This gives us an idea of shear strength of the soil at plastic limit. When toughness index is less than 1, the soil is said to be freeable, freeable, okay, freeable which means it can be easily crushed at plastic limit means with our hand also we can crush it. Okay. The toughness index is a very good parameter to check whether the soil can resist or load or not. Okay. Can resist a given load or not. Generally you can see the value for clay soil it is 0 to 3 and for soils with which are freeable at plastic limit it will be less than 1. Okay, this is your toughness index ratio of plasticity index to flow index. Shrinkage index this is just like as you have uh, just seen this is just the difference between liquid and shrinkage limit Okay, liquid limit and shrinkage limit. What was plasticity index? Plasticity index was W L minus W P if you remember okay. I P plasticity index was and what will be shrinkage limit? you can write it like this W L minus W S. Okay. Just this is the difference. Now, we have different ranges for this as well. For 20 less than 20, it is swelling property. Okay. For this, it is also showing your different swelling properties. 
this is a very important parameter why swelling property because shrinkage index is telling us about the swelling and I already told you that if a soil is swells much then the formation of building on it is a very risky uh, proposal. So, once we check out the uh, swelling property or swelling potential of any soil only after that we go on making a building. Okay. So, in other way we can say that shrinkage index is to be checked there. Okay. Activity of soil, what is activity of soil? Activity of soil actually is A C represented by A C, it is your I P upon percentage clay. You can see the ratio of plasticity index to the percentage of clay size, where C is the percentage of clay size of particle less than 0.002 mm. Okay. Activity is derived conveniently from slope of straight line as well as steeper slope means greater activity. Now, this is your formula, the first thing. Second thing, you can see clay mineral, which clay mineral it is containing, this clay, which clay, this clay, which mineral it is made up of. Either it is kaolinite, kaolinite, okay, or it may be elite, okay, or it may be montmorillonite somewhere. Like this, either this or this or elite. Okay, the only these three particles are the main which cause the soil to expand or gives the clay or expansive property. Okay, this is what we measured by this activity we actually see how much the swelling potential of or expansive soil okay, there is, how much the swelling potential is there, we actually check this. If there is montmorillonite, then it will be high activity or high swelling property because it is very smaller in size, okay, it is because, because it is small, okay, this is relatively bigger, relatively bigger, not bigger, but relatively bigger in comparison to montmorillonite okay so if it is uh, if this clay is containing kaolinite it will be having low activity but if it is made of montmorillonite it will be having a very high activity okay hence swelling potential will be also high this is your general classification 0.75 means inactive 1.125 normal and greater than this it is active okay it is the cvm case then. Unconfined compressive strength okay, represented by Q u. It is an experiment to find out how the strength, what is the strength of the soil to resist the pressure <coughs> or load onto it. Something like this or soil specimen is made and load is applied to it. How much this <coughs> soil or pad resist this load is what we will be finding out in this unconfined compressive strength. It is getting compressed, so compressive strength and why unconfined? Because we are not confining this, okay, we are not confining this, so it is the unconfined, okay. So, the unconfined compressive strength is defined as the ultimate load per unit area cross sectional area that a standard cylindrical specimen of soil can take under compression uh, without any lateral pressure, no lateral pressure, only compression. Okay. We will be doing this later on just to give you a glimpse. Now what happens, there are two to three things which you have to now understand. What happens is when a soil is in the ground, okay, it is inside the ground somewhere here, then it is showing a different property or different shear strength, but once you dig it this part you dig it, you remove and you remove this part as well out. Okay. Now, this soil is here. Due to the remolding of this soil, okay, because it was here it was in a different form, in a dense form and many other things. Due to remolding, what happens? It loses its shear strength. Okay. So, we will be talking about this phenomena. Cohesive soil under upon remolding lose a part of shear strength. The loss of strength of clay soils from remolding is called primarily by the destruction of clay particles structure that was developed during the original process of sedimentation and also disturbance due to water molecules in adsorbed layer. Main 
loss of shear strength is due to two reasons okay the first is that due to the remolding okay remolding okay and the second is the destruction of the destruction of the clay particles structure the first reason is this and the second reason is this okay these are the two reasons now see what will this cause from this we arise with a sensation named as sensitivity of soil sensitivity is the measure of loss of shear strain with remolding st is defined as the ratio of unconfined compressive strength of the clay in undisturbed state okay to unconfined compressive strength of the same clay in remolded state means st sorry okay remolded okay as to qu undisturbed upon qu remolded this is your formula now you have understood what is this okay what there will be the shear strength loss okay in remolded part it will be shear strength loss so generally the sensitivity is greater than 1 only you can see different uh, classification less than 1 insensitive 1 to 2 slightly sensitive 2 to 4 medium 4 to 8 very sensitive 16 slight quick quick means this is now uh, what does this quick means quick means the thing which is a quick sand condition okay quick sand condition we will come upon later on then 16 to 32 medium quick 32 to 64 very quick greater than 64 extra quick okay so this is the to a general concept of sensitivity of the soil it just tells us how much the shear strength loss has been occurred due to remolding of that soil okay now let us move forward thixotropy what is thixotropy the same phenomena which i just now talked about is sensitivity in it you just uh, you might remember that i told you that the there is the loss of shear strength there is the loss of shear strength upon remolding you can see there is a loss of shear strength but with time what will happen thixotropy is the process of softening caused by remolding followed by a time dependent return to the original harder state okay higher the sensitivity lower larger will be the thixotropic hardening okay minerals that absorb large quantity of water in lattice structures such as mont melanite has greater thixotropic grain compared to other stable clay minerals mainly here what you have to understand is that with time after remolding you know that the shear strength is loss okay due to two reasons i told you one was permanent destruction and the second was due to remolding this permanent destruction cannot be recovered it is gone suppose if x part of it was due to x part of the shear strength was due to the, uh, the structure then this cannot be regained but this remolding can be regained with time okay this hardening means the regaining of the shear strength caused or lost due to the remolding only okay due to remolding only so this will cause this will slowly get up to a place but it will never equal to this because a part of it will always be lost which was the due to structure okay structure this will never be regained so you understood that out of these two remolding will be can be regained after this much shear strength can be regained but due to structure the shear strength cannot be regained so it will be like this something like this you can say if it was the initial it will fall then something like this again if you remold again remold and continue remolding then it will slowly reduce okay this is your thixotropy okay summing up we can get uh, something some idea of sensitivity and thixotropy plasticity and liquidity indices okay so we will be continuing the further topics in the next class please continue watching the videos thank you